Right now at 530, a grieving community in Allen County will lay a young child to rest today after police say she was murdered. Also on WKYT this morning, a Harrison County teenager has been arrested for being involved in what police are calling a murder for hire plot. And we have the latest out of France where forensics experts trying to figure out the identity of those killed in yesterday's police raids. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. It is Thursday, November 19th. Glad you're with us on WKYT. I'm Bill Bryant. I'm Rebecca Smith. Hope you're having a great start to your day before Friday. And day before we roll into what will be a, sounds like, really bitterly cold weekend for yeah. at least what we've been used to around here. Yeah, you know? I guess there's some change on the way, Micah. Yeah, absolutely. It is November after all. We've just been so lucky the past couple of weeks. Uh, dealing with some above average temperatures. We're going to do it again today. We're getting that front on out of here. The rain's long gone. Uh, we'll be in the upper 40s, lower 50s right now. But once it's all said and done, once that sun actually comes and rises, we'll be there in the mid to upper 40s. So it's a cool start to the day, but 58 by the afternoon, which that doesn't sound that bad. But you throw in some winds, it will be on the cool side, especially if you're not under those sunny skies. So just keep that in mind. Heading out and about through the evening and off into the overnight hours, we're looking pretty good and staying dry tomorrow, too. But like Bill and uh, Rebecca were talking about, it's going to be interesting there for the weekend, especially Saturday. I'll show you that in the bitterly cold temperatures on Sunday coming up. Thank you, Micah. In the news on WKYT, a mourning community in western Kentucky will be laying a child to rest today. Seven-year-old Gabby Doolin was found dead last Saturday after disappearing during a football game in Scottsville. Police say Gabby was murdered, but they are keeping quiet about their investigation. WKYT's Michelle Chamberlain is joining us from the live desk with a look at how the community is coping with this. Yeah, the Scottsville community of more than 4,000 people promising the Doolin family that it will not grieve alone today as Amy and Brian Doolin will lay to rest their seven-year-old daughter. At one o'clock, Gabby's family and a community that has come together calling itself Scottsville Strong will say goodbye to the second grader at her funeral. The community saying Gabby's murder has changed Allen County forever. The community vowing to be strong for the Doolin family throughout the darkness of this little girl's murder. We are, you know, mourning with them, crying with them daily, um, just showing them that we're there. Today marks five days since Gabby Doolin was found dead in a pond in Scottsville. Gabby disappeared during her brother's football game. Her mom said she went to the bathroom with a friend and never returned. She was found an hour later in a pond behind the school. An autopsy confirms that her death is a homicide. Police have released little information on her murder and say they have not arrested anyone at this time. They say there are still no suspects in the case, but that they are checking leads and questioning people about Gabby's murder. This is definitely a parent's worst nightmare. Gabby's funeral is today at 1 o'clock at Scottsville Baptist Church. At the live desk, Michelle Chamberlain, WKYT. It's awful. awful. It really is. And uh, so many questions unanswered, mm -hmm. or at least we do not know if right. uh, the police have uh, some additional answers, but the investigation going on there. And another, you know, just awful story, the fate of the alleged mastermind in last week's terror attacks in Paris, still unclear this morning. Forensic experts are still trying to figure out if that mastermind is among those who are dead after yesterday's raids in France. Jonathan Vigliotti has the latest from Paris. Just a day after the violent raid that turned the streets of St. Denis into a war zone, forensics experts are still working to figure out if Abdella Mitaboud was among two terrorists killed. French SWAT teams raided this apartment in the Paris suburb Wednesday, where the alleged mastermind of last week's terror attacks was thought to be hiding. Law enforcement officials say one suspect was killed as police threw grenades and fired 5,000 rounds during the onslaught. A female suicide bomber also died after detonating an explosive vest. Eight others, including seven men and a woman, were arrested. But authorities say Aboud and another fugitive, Salah Abdeslam, were not among them. As France continues to mourn, President Francois Hollande is calling on the U.S. to intensify its role in the fight against ISIS. The topic is expected to be the focus when Hollande meets with President Obama next week in Washington. They're not coming to ask for divisions of troops to go invade any place. They're going to need help with what's called intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, or ISR. So far, officials say the airstrikes carried out by French jets and other forces have killed more than two dozen ISIS militants in the Syrian stronghold of Raqqa this week. 
Jonathan Bigliotti, CBS News, Paris. Now, France has stepped up its airstrikes against ISIS in Syria since the terror attacks of last week. Yesterday, the French aircraft carrier Charles de Gaulle left to help French military operations in Syria against ISIS. Well, windy weather over the past couple of days has caused several eastern Kentucky forest fires to spread very quickly. Currently, firefighters are battling a 25-acre fire near Browns Fork in Perry County. They say the winds made their job difficult. The flames are getting close to homes. Forestry officials say to be careful with burning debris during forest fire season. We also have people burning debris, uh, brush piles, garbage, stuff like that will get away from them, especially on a high fire day like today. It's very easy. All it takes is one ember to land on the hillside and it'll be up in flames before you can do anything about it. Investigators are not sure exactly what sparked this fire. A Harrison County teenager has been arrested for what police are calling a murder for hire plot. 19 year old Robert Weber is charged with conspiracy to commit murder. Cynthiana police say a juvenile offered Weber $80 to beat up another juvenile or $125 to slit his throat. Police say Weber showed off a gun that he was carrying and said that he would take care of it. According to officers, Weber had a knife on him when they arrested him. Police are still trying to figure out who killed a couple and two children in a western Kentucky home. Police found the bodies Tuesday night in a burning home in Callaway County. Investigators think that the fire was set on purpose. The 24-year-old mother died from a gunshot wound. Police say her 29-year-old husband, along with a 5-year-old boy and 18-month-old girl, also died. Neighbors now in shock. They seem like they were, you know, a young couple that was happy and trying to do things right. Uh, autopsies have been scheduled for all the victims. At this point, police do not know if the family was targeted or if this was a random crime. They have not said anything about possible suspects. An update to a story we first brought you yesterday morning. A man accused of holding a woman at gunpoint in eastern Kentucky has been caught. U.S. Marshals say Wallace Daniel Spence turned himself in at a secure facility. He was wanted for breaking into a woman's home, holding her at gunpoint, and threatening to kill her. Several warrants have been issued for his arrest. Marshals say that once he is transferred back to Ashland, they will serve him with those warrants. Happening today, the Lexington City Council set to vote on a potential minimum wage hike. If that measure passes, it could increase minimum wage by almost $3 over the next three years. WKYT's Mark Barber is joining us from downtown Lexington at City Hall now with a closer look. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Bill. The Urban County Council has been debating this for nine months. The question, should the city raise minimum wage from $7.25 an hour to $10.10 an hour? Now, that's nearly a $3 wage increase, and it's one that has some city leaders really concerned about how it could impact the economy. Our news partners at the Herald Leader is reporting that eight members here on the city council have voted to get the ordinance on tonight's agenda, and six have voted against it. On one side of the debate, you have those who say the city needs to do the right thing and help employees who are working hard but still struggling to make ends meet. Now, those who are against it say the wage hike could hurt consumers if businesses raise prices. They also say it could hurt the employees that it aims to help because they might lose government benefits if they make more money. Mayor Jim Gray does have veto power over tonight's vote. According to the Herald Leader, he is not saying whether he will take any action, but he is saying that he's concerned that the city might lose businesses, might lose jobs, and might lose competitiveness. Now, if the $3 wage hike does pass, the wage, the minimum wage, will gradually rise over the next three years until it hits that $10 and 10 cent mark. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. All right, something we'll be watching very carefully. Thank you, Mark. Fayette County School Superintendent Manny Calk has hired a state education leader to oversee the local district's finances, budget, and staffing. Hiram Desai will be the Fayette County Senior Director of Administrative Services. He has been an associate commissioner with the Kentucky Department of Education. The school district has been working to address financial and budget problems found in a state audit last year. Christmas a little more than a month away at this point, and while you may be starting to put your shopping list together, one Kentucky Fire Department is wanting to remind you to keep those less fortunate in mind. Barry's Volunteer Fire Department is right now collecting new or gently used toys there in Harrison County to give to kids for Christmas this year. They're also hosting a Christmas party with Santa for the little ones. Firefighters say it is a great way to help out the community. In the last two years, we've noticed uh, a lot more children 
down here. We've noticed uh, a, lot of, a lot of the children didn't have a lot of things. Um, the parents are on hard times, and uh, so we wanted to try to help. Firefighters say they expect about 100 kids at the party. If you want to help out, you can drop off a donation at the Barry City Hall that's located there on Main Street. All right, it is time to check live drive traffic at 540, 20 before 6 on WKYT this morning. It's looking good. No issues. Really is. Uh, normal traffic flow, as you see there, uh, the current traffic, and uh, really no reports of uh, any major problems right now. So if you leave early, you're good to go. Sounds on good. Thursday. More news coming up on WKYT this morning. It was a high speed chase of epic proportion. Coming up, we'll show you the suspect, in, suspect on the run in Oregon. Hey, we're looking at that rain pushing on out for today. It's long gone, so no rain expected today, tomorrow, but your weekend, it's going to be cold. And it's going to be interesting there with possibility of our first wintry mix. I'll have that coming up next.